Hello everybody, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today we are going to be tackling my June favorites. I'm going to be giving you the top plants that I have been loving throughout the month of June. And I'm so excited to share them with you because although a lot of my plants suffered in the move and are still adjusting to their new home, I do have a lot of plants that are doing really well also. So I'm excited to share some of those with you today. I can't believe summer is already underway. It makes me so happy and I'm so excited to see what growth I get throughout the rest of the growing season because we still have months ahead of us and I'm already seeing some really great things happen in my plant collection, especially now because I have more light and everything as well, which has been a pro and a con, honestly. A lot of the plants are absolutely loving it, but I have also burnt some plants already. So I'm learning lessons and I'm still trying to figure out how much light certain plants can tolerate and find spots that are going to be suitable for all the different plants that I have. So yeah, it's a learning process and um, it's a journey and I'm going to figure it out, but that's neither here nor there. Let's hop into showing you the favorites that I picked out for this month. I'm just going to grab them randomly and I do also have a few that are plants that or maybe one or two, maybe two plants that are actually living outside. So I'm going to do those ones at the end just so I don't have to be like bringing them in and out a bunch and everything. But to start, we have my beautiful Hoya Multiflora. Look at how stunning. First of all, she's grown so much. It's crazy. Like I cannot believe how bushy she is now. Honestly, a bit of a strange looking Hoya in my collection, just the way that it's growing. It has a really kind of thick stem, but then it's a thin leafed Hoya. Um, and it's basically just growing up like a weird tree or something. And it struggled a lot at first. So it's pretty bald at the bottom, you can see there. So there's only a couple of leaves and then it's pretty naked. And then you just have all of this lush foliage coming in really thickly. So yeah, interesting growth pattern. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this Hoya. I feel like I need to look up some photos of other people's to see how they grow theirs because I just, I don't know. I feel like there's a better way than this kind of like lopsided tree situation I have going on. There's also a new vine that's shooting out from the bottom. How cute is that? This is, I think my only Hoya that I currently have growing in semi-hydro. This is in the Crystal Star Nursery Pond or their soilless mix. I need to repot this really badly. Um, that will be an upcoming project. Anyways, I'm rambling a lot. The reason that this plant is on my favorites is obviously because it is in bloom right now and look at how stunning those are. Like how beautiful. It makes me so happy every single time that I look at it. It's just, it's, it's kind of in this just like cycle of constantly blooming now. It finished some blooms that were down here. You can see this peduncle is just like naked now. So that one bloomed and they all fell off really recently actually. They're still on the ground, I need to pick them up. But all the blooms dried and fell off. They stayed on for a long time too, as far as Hoya blooms go, because some of them only last like a couple of days. But these were on, I wanna say for a good couple of weeks in bloom and then eventually they fell off. But right before they fell off, all of these ones opened up. So now I have these ones and these are gonna stay for a couple of weeks. And then by the time those are falling off, I'm pretty much gonna have a new set ready right here, all of those. And then by the time those are finished, you can see this other peduncle up here is getting ready to bloom as well. So I feel like I honestly have like a good couple of months of blooms ahead of me, which is so cool. And I know that this Hoya is known for being an incredibly uh, persistent bloomer. So that just makes my day because these are some of my favorite Hoya blooms in my collection. They look like shooting stars. This is called Hoya Multiflora, but it's also commonly called the shooting star Hoya. And I remember seeing this pretty soon after I really got into plants, like years ago. And it was always kind of on my radar and I didn't end up getting this until last year, I believe. So it's really special to me also because it came from a plant friend. So I really cherish it. But yeah, it's just it's such a beautiful Hoya. I love the blooms. I think it might be getting a little bit too much light or maybe not enough fertilizer. I don't know. The new leaf is coming in a little wonky, probably too much light. Honestly, I should move it. Um, just a little bit away from the window because right now it's sitting right in the window. 
But yeah, that's why I wanted to share this one with you today because of the blooms and just how well this Hoya has been doing. So that's her. I love her so much. I can't recommend this Hoya enough. It's just incredible. And yeah, that's my first plant that I have been absolutely loving. Secondly, we have a plant that I have not talked about or shown on my channel in a long time. And that's because it was doing really great and then it promptly went downhill and then I chopped the whole thing up. It was putting out tons of runners. I chopped all the runners up. I have a ton of babies of it now. And the one that I'm gonna show you right now is a cutting that I just popped into soil and wanted to see if I could grow it in room humidity. And it turns out it's doing really well. So that one is my Hoya Obliqua Peru um, version, variety? <laughs> What's the word? I don't know. The Peru, the Hoya Obliqua Peru. Look at how gorgeous that is. Oh my goodness, I'm just obsessed with it. It did have a couple of older leaves on it that I chopped off not too long ago because they were just like yellowed and janky and they really weren't serving the plant anymore, I don't think. So this was a new healthy leaf it had put out and I figured it would be just fine with that. And it was because it put out another leaf shortly after. And look at how just satisfying this is to look at. I know I've mentioned it before in my videos, but I love when plants lay like flat like that. Like something about that I just love. Like if this was up, I wouldn't like it as much, but because it's laying like that, I don't know. It just looks so cool to me. So obviously it hasn't quite unfurled yet, but I can tell that the leaf is gonna be just gorgeous. And I'm really excited to see this plant grow. I need to get this on a pole um, immediately, but I love that I'm just growing this on my windowsill because I feel like for a long time, these were really known as being or like marketed or like you'd only see them online, like in people's terrariums or cabinets. They were um, made out to be a very high maintenance plant and they came with a really large price tag, which they don't anymore but at the time they did. So I think everyone was just like very, it was like a stressful thing when you had one and people put so much work into keeping them alive and everything. Um, so I really love just that I'm growing this in my windowsill and it's doing so well. So yeah, I can't wait for this leaf to unfurl and I cannot wait to see uh, it grow even more. And yeah, we're gonna see how it goes, but so far so good. It's been so happy just hanging out in my living room. I really don't do anything special to it at all. I don't treat it any differently than I do my Monstera Adansonii. So yeah, it's doing really well. No bougie treatment from me for this plant. And yeah, I just think that that's so cool. I'm glad to see it bouncing back. And like I said, I have a ton of babies of this as well. So yeah, that I grew from the runner. I just chopped up, I chopped up the runner and um, actually have a video that should be coming out on that as well. I need to finish it up, but it will be coming out hopefully sometime soon. <laughs> Okay, next we have an alocasia. You guys know I'm really on an alocasia kick right now. And this is my stunning alocasia cupria. Look at this new leaf. I cannot get over it. It looks so cool, so alien. It's extremely just like shiny and beautiful. This is definitely the nicest leaf that this plant has ever given me. So. Yeah, I've been obsessing over it. I see it every day and admire it. And yeah, it's been out for, <clears throat> it's been out for a while now, maybe about 10 days, um, 10 days ago it unfurled. And yeah, it just looks so amazing. It's, there's nothing else like this in my plant collection. It's so freaking unique. So of course I love it. And this alocasia is pretty special to me because I grew this just from a corm. This was from kind of a failed import that I did around two years ago now. I received two alocasia and they both completely died back to the corm. And out of the two, only one corm survived. The other corm was alocasia silver dragon. And then this corm was the one that survived. And I didn't know what it was gonna be until it grew. <laughs> of course I didn't label them because I'm so bad at labeling things, but um, it started growing and I saw that it was the cupria and I was so excited and it's just been such a joy to grow Honestly, it's such an easy plant. It tolerates my underwatering. It needs to be watered right now It's like literally as dry as a bone. This leaf is on its way out It also had spider mites too for a while It did I should give it another treatment actually just to make sure but um, yeah, I find it to be a really resilient alocasia if you've been interested in them or thinking of getting one I would say that it's very beginner friendly in my 
humble opinion. So yeah, I love it so much. It's doing really well. And this new leaf has just been blowing my mind this month. So yeah, I of course had to show that to y'all. I hope that you appreciate it as much as I do. I feel like you will. It's just so cool. Okay, next I have an Ethereum to show you. This was an Ethereum that I unboxed recently in my Cartel Done unboxing video. I will link that in the description box if you haven't seen it because I I hauled some really incredible Ethereum and I love all of them so much. This was one of them. This is Ethereum Minahasa, which I'm pretty sure is a form of crystallinum. The reason it's in my favorites is because, well, obviously it's a beautiful plant, but this is a new leaf that it has put out and I am so impressed by this. Okay, unfortunately it was coming out perfectly. Perfect, stunning, beautiful, gorgeous. And then of course the shelf in my cabinet had to fall down because the suction cups kept losing suction. I have since added really heavy duty suction cups in here. So these have not been moving at all now, but of course it was too late and this Ethereum had already received some damage right here from that falling, which really sucks. It's still gorgeous though. Yeah, it has some scratches, but it's still gorgeous. And I'm still just like blown away by this new leaf. It's so dark and beautiful. The veins on this are so thick and silver and just like, wow. Like it's really, really beautiful. I was honestly kind of shocked to see this new leaf coming out because it pretty much started emerging like right after I moved. And I was quite concerned about my new Ethereum when I moved because I unboxed those so close to when I moved. I think it was within a couple of weeks, honestly. So they had just come to me, I unboxed them, um, did the video and everything, and then just threw them in the cabinet and was trying to settle them in and everything. They didn't get to settle in for very long before I had to take them out again, take my both my cabinets completely apart, put the plants in bins, move, and then build the cabinets again. And you know, there was like delays in between there and everything because I'm in the middle of moving. And long story short, I was just concerned that I was gonna lose some of them or that I would see, I don't know, just really detrimental effects from moving so soon after receiving them. But I honestly didn't. Like, I'm so glad to say that all of those Anthurium that I hauled in that video are doing so well. Almost all of them, if not all of them, I think all of them have put out a new leaf but this is by far the most impressive one because this is the biggest plant that I received. So I just wanted to show that to you and also give you a little update on how those Ethereum are doing. But yeah, this is just, oh, it's so pretty. Like the sparkle is unreal on the veins. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I love it so much. It did get a little dry. I think that's why this is curled in a little bit. Um, I just watered it though, so yeah. It have, does have some really healthy, beautiful looking roots in here which is so nice to see i'm probably gonna let these hang out in moss for a little while longer and then i'm gonna pot them all up maybe i'll do a dedicated video to potting all of my new ethereum up into i'm probably just gonna do a chunky soil mix so let me know if you would want to see that but yeah they're all doing great and this one has this stunning new leaf Okay, next we have a moss pole plant. I think that this is actually the only moss pole plant that I have in this video, which is interesting because I feel like my moss pole plants tend to be really high in my favorites out of all my plants. Anyways, the one I'm gonna be showing you today is my beautiful philodendron gigas. Oh my goodness, this plant is coming back with a vengeance. Look at how stunning it's looking. Oh my goodness, look at that new leaf. Like, are you kidding me? I love how they come in with that kind of orangey bronzy tone. This new leaf honestly has emerged perfectly. Like, oh, it is just gorgeous. The sheen on the gigas is absolutely beautiful. So yeah, this new leaf is why I'm obsessed with it. But just like in general, I'm obsessed with this plant right now. Look, it's already going with another leaf coming out there. And I just recently added this dragonfly clip to make sure it's adhering onto the pole so that it can root into there and everything. I can see roots in the back. So I know that the other nodes have rooted in here. We added this extension on not even that long ago and it's already climbing so fast. I'm going to have to add another one. Like, look at this. This was honestly kind of, I wanna say a rehab situation, but I had cut back my old one. I forget what happened. I know I did this in a video, 
I would cut it back and then propagated. I think I've added a propagation down here, which I guess is growing, but it's not on the pole yet. It's just small down here. That's a separate plant. But anyways, I know that this plant was not very big when we potted it in here and gave it this new pole. And now it's already given me a few beautiful, just like gorgeous leaves. I think this was the first one it gave me after we repotted it and everything. And then this one, and now this one. And yeah, I just love it so much. I feel like the Gigas is really underrated when it comes to velvet philodendron. And I've said that before, but I'm actually starting to see people post about it more now which is nice to see because I just, I love seeing photos of them. I love when people share about them in videos. I just think that they're so stunning and honestly, they're pretty easy going. They don't often get stuck leaves like something like the Milano Chrysum does. So yeah, I feel like it's such a great option and they're just so beautiful. Like the leaves are so dark, they're so dark. Um, so yeah, I've really, really been admiring this one. It's still living in my Millsbow tall cabinet but I will be taking that out at some point because it's just going to outgrow it soon. So probably within the next month, I'm gonna be taking it out of the cabinet, maybe even sooner, honestly, maybe in the next couple of weeks, we'll see. But yeah, I have a feeling it's gonna do fine outside of the cabinet. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it does because I don't think I've ever really grown this outside of the cabinet. Okay, and then next we actually have a syndapsis and this is my syndapsis tattoo that I got from Plant Haven Toronto. It was, I think it was like a few months ago now that I got this plant and I got some other absolutely stunning plants. I'll link the unboxing. I'm sure I did an unboxing. I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it. But yeah, I got this syndapsis and it is so, so beautiful. And not only is it stunning, like this is, might be my favorite syndapsis that I own, honestly. I just love this like, I don't know, pixelated kind of variegation pattern on it. I just think that it looks so, so cool. And it has like that bluey tone to it. So not only do I just love the foliage, but this thing is growing like a beast for me, you guys. Like it will, it's just growing like crazy. It will not stop. Um, there's two leaves that are about to unfurl right here. Coming off of the same vine too, like how, how is it even growing so fast? Like this one hasn't even unfurled and then there's a new one right here. Like that's crazy. And then on the other vine over here, we have a new leaf has just come out, which was this one, gorgeous. And then it's already starting to push out another new leaf. So this thing is just growing better than um, all of my large leaf syndapsis I struggle with. So it's growing better than any large leaf syndapsis that I have. The only syndapsis that grows really well for me is my Argerius, which is like a smaller leafed syndapsis. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm honestly surprised that I haven't had problems with this because I tend to always have problems with syndapsis. So I don't know if I'm just lucky or if this is a variety that's known for being a bit easier. Maybe if you have one, leave a comment down below and let me know or if you've heard anything about them. Um, because yeah, I'm kind of curious. It's just, it's doing so much better than I thought it was going to be doing. And I will say that uh, there is some light damage on some of the leaves. Um, yeah, that happened from a grow light, but the other light damage I think is from the sun because I do have it pretty close to a window. So I think I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit and I think it's still gonna do really well, but I just don't want it to get burnt. It's also still living in sphagnum moss. I wonder if we can take a look at the roots. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh. They look so freaking good. Look at how satisfying that is. Wow. So I need to pot this up soon. I would love to get it a really cute pot. I'm just like really digging this plant. <laughs> I wanna go all out and get it a cute pot and get it looking really nice. Um, yeah, I'm so impressed with this plant. I love it so much and I can't wait to get it potted into soil and in a new pot and everything. Hopefully it does well with that transition. I'm sure it will. But um, yeah, it's still in the moss and in the pot that it came in and everything. And it's just been doing amazingly. So yeah, Syndapsis Tattoo, a really like cool, unique one that's just growing so well for me. 
Okay, lastly, I need to go grab the plants that are living outside that I wanted to show you. I do have some that are growing and blooming and doing cool things, so I'll be right back. Okay, so the first one that I've brought in from outside is a Hoya, and this Hoya has pretty much convinced me that I need to move more of my Hoya outside, so I'm in the process of doing that because I just cannot believe how well this has grown outside. It is my Hoya Obovada, which is a Hoya that just has never really taken off for me. I've always had a hard time getting nice leaves on it. I'd mostly get leaves that would come out looking something like that, which is just, you know, not the look that one is going for when trying to grow Hoya Obovada. They're supposed to be nice round leaves. So I popped it outside when I moved because I was just kind of feeling whatever about it. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna throw it out there, see how it does. And I have just been shocked by one leaf in particular that I've gotten, but there are more coming in. So I think I'm really going to have quite a beautiful plant by the end of the summer. So this is the leaf that I am in awe of. Whoop. I cannot believe, I cannot believe how beautiful it is. First of all, it's huge. Sorry, it's hard to hold. It keeps slipping out of my hand. So yeah, it is huge. It is pretty much perfectly round. And it also has pink splash because I guess because it's getting higher light outside, even though I have this at the very back of my deck, so it's not getting any direct sunlight or anything like that. It's still just being outside gets a lot of light, I guess. Oh. I'm breaking a little piece off. I guess that part was dead anyways. So yeah, it grew this leaf and I just could not believe it. And then I looked at it because this caught my attention. I was like, holy smokes, like this leaf is immaculate. So it caught my attention and then I came and looked at it and it has so much new growth that's coming in. It has leaves growing. Oh gosh, it's so hard to see in this viewfinder, but there's leaves growing right there. There's leaves growing here. You can see a little one emerging there. So that's probably gonna be a really beautiful leaf. There's a leaf coming in here on this vine. I've just never seen so much growth happening on this plant. There's uh, leaves growing here as well. This is a new one that's currently emerging. And then there's active growth at the tip there. It's just doing so well and I just, I've never seen such a nice Hoya Obovada leaf as this one. So I'm just, I'm so thrilled about that. I think that I'm actually gonna move my variegated one out there because like I said, I've struggled with this one. So of course I'm struggling with the variegated version that's currently in my cabinet. I think I'm gonna pop it outside and see how it does. And someone I believe in my, on my Patreon was saying that um, thick leaf Hoyas tend to do really well outside. So now I've moved out my Hoya chicken farm, my Hoya crimson princess, and I'm probably even gonna move out a couple of more that I think are gonna do, maybe my variegated compactas. Maybe they'll start growing. But yeah, I'm just so stoked on how well that's doing. And I'm excited to see all of the other new leaves that are coming in as well. And then the second, plant from outside and the last plant that I have on my favorites list for this time is my Stapelia grandiflora and it's clear the reason that I am loving this plant right now is because it is in bloom. Look at that. Oh my goodness, the bloom has opened up. It's massive, it's hairy, and it looks like a creepy starfish creature and I'm so here for it. I love it. It honestly looks like a little decoration or something on here. <laughs> like it's just so bizarre looking. Yeah, this bloom started coming in shortly after moving actually, and it's been living outside there the whole time pretty much as well. So almost four weeks now and it's loving life out there. You can see like the tips here. Well, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but the tips are purple. So it's getting like a little bit sun stressed and it's growing and it looks so pretty. And then um, the bloom opened up and yeah, it's just doing so well out there. I actually have most of my cactus and succulents outside on the deck, which is really nice for them. So I've just been admiring this bloom so much, of course. I love when any of my plants bloom, but especially when they put out a really cool, unique bloom like this. So yeah, I'm just so blown away by it. I love it so much. This is the second time that this plant's bloomed for me, I believe. 
and it's just such a cool thing to see. So I highly recommend this plant and this bloom is attracting the flies. Now that it's outside, it obviously wasn't really attracting anything when the last time it bloomed because it was inside my house. But now that it's sitting outside, whenever I look at it or go to pick it up, it has flies on it and I have to like shoo them away. So yeah, it's supposed to have like a scent to attract them and attract the pollinators. Um, it doesn't, it does, it does smell pretty gross, honestly. I can smell it now. I couldn't, I tried to smell it a couple days ago and it didn't smell like anything, but it, it does have kind of a gross smell, almost like an eggy smell or like, I don't know, something gross. It smells weird, um, but it's supposed to. So yeah, if you had like a bunch of blooms on one plant, then it might be pretty stinky, especially if you had it in your house. I guess the flies like it though. Anyways, that is going to be it for my June favorites. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are honestly the best. Your comments always make my day. So thank you very much for leaving them. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as well if you liked it. All right. Thank you guys so much. I will see you in the next one. Bye.